hello all welcome back to my channel so in this video we'll discuss about uh, scaffolding so uh, what is scaffolding and also we'll see what are the different types of scaffolding uh, which are used regularly okay so coming to scaffolding uh, scaffolding is defined as a temporary structure either made up of timber or steel or any other material or a metal uh, which looks like a framework on which people means the workman will sit and do their construction work okay so it's a temporary structure so you can move it wherever you are doing the construction work there you keep it and later on you can move it or either you can demolish it or you can just remove the uh, you know nuts and bolts and you can fit it back so this is how a scaffolding uh, is a temporary structure okay and uh, wherever you are doing a new construction or wherever you are doing the repair of an existing structure or even where you are trying to demolish the building there you put up this scaffolding okay and uh, we generally require scaffolding uh, when the height of the structural member whether it could be a wall or a column or anything which will be greater than generally 1.5 meters okay remember the scaffolding should be sufficiently strong and stable why because uh, generally the I already told you the workmen will sit on it they carry some equipment along with them when they sit on it uh, they carry some materials along with them so this scaffolding should be able to take that entire load okay and uh, as the uh, work progress goes on means as you move up towards the upside of the I mean upper side of the building you have to increase your height of the scaffolding so you can see right this is a scaffolding like this so I, I I guess you could have seen the scaffoldings right so for painting purposes we see for construction of buildings we see for construction of any monuments we see for construction of any idols we see the scaffoldings okay coming to the components of scaffolding we have some important parts or components of scaffolding in general let's see them first one is standards so standards are the vertical members of the framework supported on the ground or embedded in the ground so if you observe this um, scaffolding you can see this vertical member right this one this one so these vertical members are called as standards so they either will rest on the ground or you try to uh, dig them inside the ground okay for supporting so the vertical members of the scaffolding framework are called standards next comes ledgers so if standards are the vertical members then we have ledgers which are the horizontal members they run parallel to the wall means whatever you have the structure to that structure they run parallel they are called as uh, ledgers okay next comes braces so braces will be the diagonal members okay which are fixed on the standard so if you see this diagram uh, you can see the braces here okay so uh, braces are like the diagonal members whereas your ledgers are the uh, horizontal members so if you see in this first diagram the dark blue color this one this is the standard what I told you the vertical member either they have a, if they have a support they will rest on the ground otherwise you'll dig I mean you'll uh, uh, put this uh, standard inside the ground and this green color one whatever you are able to see which is the horizontal member running parallel to the wall which is your ledger okay and this yellow color one is the base plate on which your standard is resting we'll see what are next put logs and tra uh, transoms so braces will be the diagonal members so vertical members are standards horizontal members are ledges and diagonal members are braces next comes put logs so what are put logs so put logs are generally placed at right angles to the wall with one end supported on ledgers and the other end on the wall means say suppose uh, this yellow color one this small this line whatever you are able to see this this these are your ledgers means what is one end will be fixed or one end will be supported with the wall and the other end will be on the uh, ledger so you can see here uh, say if one end is fixed so you will be having uh, okay just a second I will show you clearly so ledgers and transforms a little bit uh, closer but see here okay i'll tell you first what is the transform then you'll understand ledger easy now uh, sorry uh, put logs easily so now you can see here in this diagram this these are transforms okay so you can see what are this green color one i told you they are the ledgers which are running parallel to the wall 
for uh, this transform is a member of the framework in which both the ends of the member are supported on the ledger means if you see this edge of the transform and this edge of the transform both are resting on the ledger itself so this is called as a transform so if the both ends of the uh, member are resting on the ledger then you call it as transform but sometimes what will happen is this end will be fixed to the wall or bolted to the wall or it is uh, this support will be resting on the wall or the structural member and this other end will be on the ledgers that will be called as a put lock that's the difference so these are transfer members placed at right angles to the wall with one end supported on ledges and the other end on the wall this is what i'm telling you okay means one end will be on this end will be on the wall this end will be as usual like this on the ledger if both ends are there on the ledger you call it as a transform Next we have boarding. So these are the horizontal platforms to support workmen and material and are supported on the put locks. So if you see something like this here. Uh, so yeah, uh, after this placing, you can see some, uh, I mean, it's not in, the, in this diagram, but if you see people who are painting and all, they'll be having a horizontal framework. Okay, either made up of some sticks or some sheets and on that they will sit and they will carry the material to the required height, right? or they will sit on that and they will do their work that is called as a boarding next we have guardrail so guardrail is provided at about one meter level to the to guard the men working on the board so around the board you have the guardrail which is preventing the people to fall down next we have toe boards uh, they are the boards which are placed parallel to the boarding near the wall to give protection to the workers so uh, you can see here yeah is the toe board and yeah this one whatever you can see this is this is like your board okay and uh, I mean to say what I was talking about the boardings okay and uh, this top one is your toe board and here you have around this you'll be having the guardrail okay we'll see now the types of scaffolding so we have uh, first one which is single scaffolding which is also called as a bricklayer scaffolding or put log scaffolding so it is a it consists of a single framework means it consists of only one set of standards ledgers and put logs okay uh, which are they are generally constructed parallel to the wall at a distance of about 1.2 meters so the standards are placed at 2 to 3 meter intervals at a vertical interval of 1 to 1.5 meter ledges are connected means so at every one one two uh, at every one two one one point two to one point five means say suppose this is your ground level from here to here means at a distance of one point five meter you will be having a ledger again from here to again after another one point five meter you will be having a ledger like this you'll be constructing the framework okay then you place put logs on the ledgers and another right angles obviously they will be resting on the wall okay so that's the reason we call it as a put log scaffolding it is used for big brick laying so when we are constructing a brick masonry structure you use this type of scaffolding so this is how it looks so you can see here okay so you have a boarding here this is your boarding on which people will sit uh yeah you can see this one right this this uh this small small uh, pipes like things what are coming out where i've put the arrow mark these are your put logs so one end is resting on the wall one end is coming on the ledger so this is your ledger and these are your standards next comes double scaffolding which is also called as mason scaffolding it is also sometimes called independent scaffolding so what is uh, double scaffolding see generally when if we consider stone masonry means any structure constructed out of stone we cannot uh, i mean it's a little bit difficult to make holes inside the wall okay into the wall so that we want to put this put log i already to showed you here right put log means this one this pipes whatever i have shown marked here see rounds i have given so generally you see here if you can see this diagram clearly see this end is inside the wall one end is coming out on the ledger so these are your uh, put logs so to fix that one end of the put log into the wall we have to make the hole so if it is a brick wall it is easy but if it is a stone masonry it is little bit difficult so what we do is in such cases we use two rows of scaffolding in the earlier one we used only one row here we use two rows 
two separate frameworks two separate vertical frameworks we use that's called as a double scaffolding okay and the first row and the second row are placed at an interval of 20 to 30 centimeter and at a distance of 1.2 to 1.5 meters away from the wall so then you put the put logs on both the frames okay so there will be one frame here so at a distance of 1.2 meters between uh, i mean uh, from the wall you put another one and on this you insert the put logs okay since because you are not able to punch the hole into the wall and then you uh, take the help of rakers and cross braces to make more stronger so like this so see here this is one framework this is another framework there are two sets of frameworks okay and you can see the cross braces here to make it much stronger all right and on this will come your put log so you can see here there will be one put log here there will be one put log here since i am not able to punch the hole inside all right so here also if you can see here in this diagram also you can see so here one one set will be here and this set will be here next comes cantilever scaffolding so it is uh, used when you have uh, the ground surface very weak uh, when you don't have a possibility for your standards means the vertical members of the framework uh, to dig into the ground means even though if you place in the ground if the soil is weaker the ground is weaker the standards will not stay strong they are not stable hence you are uh, what will happen your entire uh, scaffolding framework will not be stable uh, in such cases and also when the upper part of the wall is to be carried out means when you are going to bigger heights there and also it is required to keep the space near the wall free of a walk means if this is the wall and there is some walkway need to be provided and here should come your scaffolding work means you need to provide some space uh, besides the wall or besides this uh, you know uh, around the place where you want to put up the scaffolding then you can go for a cantilever scaffolding okay this try to imagine means like if there is a big building and even if uh, means in there is a big building and on the upper floor of the building some demolition work or some repairing work is to be taking place so uh, at that time when you install scaffolding till the ground surface here people may not be here if you put up from here to here if you put up the scaffolding then the people here may not be able to walk it becomes like a uh, you know obstacle for them under such cases means the third point what i want trying to tell you under all these three conditions we take the help of a cantilever scaffolding or a needle scaffolding okay so it could be a single type or a double type means you could have only a single boarding or you can have i mean single boarding or single framework or you may have two sets of them so this is how it looks like so see here so you can see there is certain distance on on this you have the uh, uh, you know uh, scaffolding framework like this so for uh, this is called as a cantilever scaffolding okay next comes suspended scaffolding uh, even suspended scaffolding is little closer to your cantilever scaffolding but what is exactly here is at least here we are having some support only at the bottom means only like a single support okay see here only one like single support here you have your framework but here in suspended scaffolding uh, the scaffolding is completely suspended means i think you know the meaning of the word suspending means right from the roof of the building we leave it downward no we don't provide any supports for this scaffolding from the bottom we just suspend it from the top either with the help of ropes or chains so you can lower or uh, you can raise the platform or the boarding of your scaffolding like this you can see these people are this scaffolding is suspended with the help of ropes so when there is traffic at the bottom when there is something happening at the bottom when you cannot uh, uh, give the supports from the bottom you can use a suspended scaffolding last uh, next one we have trestle scaffolding in this uh, this type of scaffolding is mainly used for painting and repairing works inside a room okay uh, with a height of uh, not more than 
5 meters okay and this platform or the scaffolding will be generally supported on the top of a mobile contrivances such as tripods or ladders or it can be sometimes even mounted on wheels like this so inside a house or inside a building when you want to do you can use such type of scaffolding which is called trestle scaffolding so you can have take the help of tripods or it may be having a wheel system also next we have st steel scaffolding so instead of using wooden members or timber members everything if you use means all the put logs or standards or braces everything if you are using with the help of steel you call it as a steel scaffolding and all they are uh, fitted together with the help of uh, steel couplings okay and uh, this type of uh, scaffolding can be erected and dismantled very easily so wherever you are doing the work you can uh, with the taking the with the help of nuts and bolts you can fit the steel scaffolding you can use it once it is done you can remove it you can keep it uh, everything you can take it all the parts you can uh, you know you can uh, strip it out you can and you can carry away okay and it is nowadays mostly used um, uh, and it is also used in construction of high rise buildings uh, because it is having good resistance good strength carrying capacity it's having good resistance okay durability also so initially the cost will be high means because uh, to buy the steel scaffolding all the materials initially the cost would be high but later on you can use it multiple number of times like this so you can see everything is fitted together with the nuts and bolts once the work is done you can just remove and you can use it next comes ladder scaffolding or uh, this is called as patented scaffolding so this type of scaffoldings generally you can see in supermarkets or big big malls okay where they take the materials they climb they keep it they arrange in the stacks like this okay it is made up of steel and similar to your steel scaffolding this is all about scaffolding uh, i hope you all understood the video for the notes of this video please click on the description you'll have the notes thanks for watching